Today, I'm going to show you what's inside an oil burner fuel pump. This pump is a Webster pump. This company's still around, but this particular model number, they no longer make. They have a replacement model for this. Now, I'm pointing this out because this fuel pump is anywhere between 20 to 22 years old. It's the original pump that came with the boiler, and the boiler motor burnt out a couple times, but not the pump. Anyway, about a week ago, this pump stopped work. We had cold weather and the boiler just wouldn't turn on. I'm gonna take this apart to show you what's inside of this pump, what makes it work, and the difference between this pump and the SunTech pump that I bought to replace it. Locally, there wasn't a supply house that sold this pump, but they all sell the SunTech. Now the SunTech, this one here, right out of the box, it wasn't working. And I'm gonna pull it apart just to show you the difference between the two. But I have to say, this pump is very noisy compared to this one. This one's a lot quieter when it runs. This isn't a video on how to install the pump. Number one, I'm not a tech, so I can't give you any technical advice on these pumps. Even though I work on them, I'm not a tech, so I'm not going to give you any technical advice on it. I'm just going to show you what the inside of this pump looks like, so you have an idea and the difference between these two pumps. It's uh, pretty significant on the inside. Now this pump I took all I took apart all the way down to the basics. This one here I didn't because it's going back and I wanna make sure I have all the pieces back. I already installed this pump yesterday and it's been working fine. I'm gonna show you the symptoms of a pump when it's not working. First of all, it's the obvious. Your motor's running, you open, the, open up and there's no flame. That could either be the fuel pump or you can have an electrical problem. The second, I noticed this at the end of the season. When the motor shut down, I was getting a little bit of an oil drip from the nozzle. I wasn't quite sure what caused that. I'm not a tech. Come to find out, I'm doing some research and some reading. When your pump, when your motor shuts down and your pump is it right, it'll let some of the oil go through. The next, when I turned it on this season, the motor hummed and this, I call it a squirrel cage, the blower wasn't blowing, nothing was moving. So I thought it was just a bad motor. When I pulled the motor off, I turned it on again and the motor spun. When I went to turn this, the pump was seized. I pulled the pump apart, cleaned it out, put it back together, and still nothing. Now what I use, because the other, this, this is a bleeder valve down here on this pump. The other pump had a bleeder valve up here. This is for a pressure gauge on this one. And when the way this line came in, it was right over the bleeder valve, and I couldn't use the valve because I couldn't open it up. I had this old feeder tube, a gun tube. So what I would do in the beginning of the season, I would take this feeder tube or gun tube off and put this one on here that's all bent up, hook it to a hose and let it run until it purges itself out. And I would generally get all stuff up from the bottom of the tank like this. Once it started coming out clean, I would change my filter, change the nozzle, fire it up and make sure everything was okay. But now back to this pump, this pump was seized. I cleaned it up, I put it back on and what was happening without this being on, I was able to get fuel coming out of the bleeder valve, but no fuel was coming out of this port right here that feeds the gun tube, that feeds the burner. And I, I tried a second time pulling the pump off, cleaning it all out, putting it back together. I used carburetor cleaner in there, uh, blew it out with the compressor, still nothing. So I went and I bought this pump, put it on. And another thing, the pump that I had on was a lot noisier than this pump here. This is a SunTech, and at the supply house, they said this is the common pump that they sell all the time. And I have to tell you, this pump's a lot quieter. This pump also has a strainer in it. The pump I pulled out doesn't have a strainer. Well, they call it a strainer, 
but it's actually blades that cuts up any debris that bypasses the filter and comes into the pump. I think that's why that pump was so noisy. But that's the pump we're going to pull apart. I'll show you that. And this cardboard on the ground here, let me close this up. I could pull out now. It was just here to see if I had any drips. I want to make sure everything was okay. I watched it for a couple of hours. I hung by for a couple of hours to make sure there was no drips. But I left this underneath. And these drips you see that are on here. These are circled. These are the ones that were on here while I was moving stuff around. So these aren't new drips. These are all circled over here. So now, this is working okay. Let's go take that pump apart so I can show you what's inside. I'm trying to get out of this shadow, okay. So, we'll start with the pump itself. On this inlet over here, you have the tube that feeds the burner. On this side, you have the inlet. You have the oil coming from the oil tank and oil filter, and the pipe goes into here. Now, because my tank is below the furnace, I have a two-line system, and the other line goes here in the bottom. I just put this plug in because there's oil all over. Matter of fact, I cleaned this up quite a bit for this video. And this paper you see me using here, it's all recycled paper. This is paper that was used that has to be shredded. Um, once it's full of diesel fuel, I'll probably just use it to start my fire. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is because the theme of my channel is to reuse, repurpose, repair, and recycle. So this is all recycled material here. This valve up here is the bleed valve, which when they installed this, they did it incorrectly because the feed tube comes out this way, comes over, and goes into the boiler right above this. So there was never a way to bleed this. When I used to have to bleed it, I used to bleed it from this from the feed tube. I would just turn it around and bleed it into a hose. So that's corrected now that I have this other one installed. Let's get into this. These screws are loose because I've been in here before. But when you first open it, they are tight. It's pretty interesting the way this pump works. Now when I first took this apart, because I did take this apart years ago, it jammed up on me. I had some muck in the fuel. Got a couple hundred gallons. It was a combination of water from condensation. I let the tank run low. And when they came with a new delivery, I guess I pushed all that stuff right into the lines. And I had to clean it out. And when I first took it apart, where's your filter? I said, I don't know. That's how it came. Like I said, I'm not a tech. He goes, well, it's got to be a filter in there. Well, come to find out, there isn't any filter on this particular pump. The way this pump works for a filter, and this is why these are stripped out. Let me get a pair of pliers here. And this is why this pump was probably so much noisier than the other one. Okay, these screws just about had it. Okay. feeds the uh, boiler itself, but it did come out of the bleed, the bleeder tube. So what I did, I just kept running the boiler until I got all the um, dirty fuel out. I get a lot of uh, condensation in my tank. In the beginning of every year, I have to um, drain a gallon or two out because I get that muck in there. Now, you have this gasket here it's a metal gasket this is what acts as the as the filter on this pump see this here this turns and the theory on this and i got this information from another youtuber this turns and the whole theory behind this is that the fuel comes into this pump this grinds up any um debris that might be in the fuel but it doesn't get it and this is how these pumps work now this pump was actually seized i thought 
when I went downstairs and I hit the reset button on my boiler, I heard a hum. So I thought my pup, my uh, motor burnt out again. Took the motor off, I plugged it in, and it spun. So what else could it be? It had to be something that was jamming up. There was nothing blocking the cage that turns. So I said it had to be this. I pulled this off and this was seized. I was able to free it up, but I couldn't get it to pump fuel out of the nozzle end. Took it apart twice, put it together twice, just couldn't get it to go. And that's it. So this pump over here is very noisy. If you have uh, your tech come over and he gives you a choice on which pump to go for, go for the SunTech. The SunTech is a lot quieter. And I believe, again, the reason for all the noise is this spinning around all the time. And you get see, there isn't any filter in here, but this grinds it up. Okay, I'll put this together off camera. I just want to make a quick video to show you the difference between the two. Now we have the SunTech. And it's amazing. I talked to a tech friend of mine. I said, did you ever have one go bad right out of the box? And he goes, out of, hundreds that he, out of the hundreds that he's installed, he can only think of one time. Well, this is my first installation, and the first one was bad. I'm looking for a rag, I'm trying to keep this camera clean. Now, I took these screws out prior to uh, the video, just to make this quick. And I have a little illustration. SunTech has a nice diagram on their pump. So, in the next clip, you'll see the difference between the SunTech and this Webster. These to take these screws out, I used uh, an Allen wrench, a uh, five five thirty second Allen wrench, and this is the inside of this pump. And the way this works, this I had out already. You have this filter in here, so when that pump is pumping the fuel through, this filter will catch all the debris, and you have one less moving part going around. You still have the pump pumping, but one less moving part, and another feature on this you can see see this is where it connects to your motor there's that plastic piece there's a tube that connects this to the motor and the motor will spin when your motor comes on it turns it now this one here this thing is for visual purposes now this one here the setup worked a lot easier for me you have the bleed valve on this end when this one here, they installed it on top. You have the inlet on the same side. This over here tells you what's for, it's a gauge. You put a pressure gauge on there so you could check the pressure. And pressure could be adjusted on these. I, they, I believe they come with a hundred, they're set at a hundred pounds and it could go up to 140. And it's this screw over here that adjusts the pressure. Maybe that's all that had to be done on that one. Like I said, it gave me almost 22 years it didn't owe me anything and here's where the fuel will come out on this one same as the other and now the return on this one the return on the webster was on top the return on this one is on the bottom doesn't give you a choice the webster gives you a choice the top or the bottom this one it's the bottom now because i have that return line there's a bypass in here you open this up before you connect the line to it. There's a, like a little set screw that has to go in there. So it bypasses, it doesn't keep circulating in there, the extra fuel, and it goes back to the tank. And that's about it. And the diagram that's going to follow, it's from SunTech. It's the SunTech page. It's their diagram. And they do recommend that this gets cleaned once a year. In all the years I had people servicing my boiler, I don't remember anybody taking the pump off. As a matter of fact, most of the time, the reason I started cleaning them myself, most of the time when they clean the boiler, they don't even take the motor off, the cleaning sign where I call it a squirrel cage. It's that blower that blows air into the furnace, and you got to see what comes out of there. As I mentioned before, this diagram is from the SunTech online page. This is a SunTech diagram. And I'm using this diagram to point out 
what I believe the problem was on the Webster pump. Now, this port over here, right here where the circle is, this is for the pressure gauge port on the SunTech. But on the Webster, it was the bleed valve. You can see these gears over here. When the fuel comes in and this pump is turning, these gears are causing the pressure to pump this fuel through and out. Over here is the nozzle port where fitting goes on and it goes up into the burner. Where the circle is over here is where the bleed valve is on the Webster. After I cleaned the Webster pump out, fuel was coming out of the bleed valve, but none of it was coming out through the nozzle port. So I believe I had a blockage right over here. This spring is where you would adjust the pressure, but right over here is where the blockage had to be if the pumps were similar. I'm not 100% sure on that. But if you want some information on this pump, here's the SunTech information down below. It has their phone number, and you can give them a call if you have any questions, or you could go right to their site and get this diagram down yourself and the information for this diagram. If you're just curious on how it works, it gives you a key over here where the fuel is being sucked in, where the excess fuel is being returned to the tank. You have the nozzle pressure, because after, after it goes through the pump, you have the pressure where it's pumping it out and over. So that's it for the diagram. Just wanted to show you the inside, what they look like, and the difference between them. So there you have it, SunTech. If you found this video useful, or if you have any questions, post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. Give it a like. It really does help. And if you know anybody else that may enjoy the videos on my channel, be sure to share it with them. It does help. It helps a lot, and I do appreciate it. And if you do buy items online, I have an affiliate link down below for Amazon. Whenever you buy through that Amazon link, it doesn't cost you anything else, but it tracks back to my channel. And on qualified purchases, I get a little commission on them, and it helps. And again, it's no additional cost to you. It does help, and it's greatly appreciated. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. And until next time, stay safe and stay warm.